Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. So this video, we're going to be talking about police or LEO trade-in pistols and whether or not they're going to be a good value to you guys. One of the things that I would like to hear from you is if you have any experience with buying police trade-in pistols, sound off in the comment section down below. What's been your experience? Was it good? Was it bad? Was there things that you needed to do to, to get it to where you wanted it? Sound off, let me know down in the description below. In addition to that, if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click that button. If you guys are interested in getting alerts for the new videos that are coming out, hit the bell icon as well. And for you that have already been subscribed to the channel, the best way you can do to support the channel is hitting that share button. Share it with your friends, post it on Facebook, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, that would really help as well, along with those likes and everything else. So I would really appreciate all of that. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna be talking about police trade-in pistols and whether or not they are a good value or if there's some considerations that you need to keep in mind before you purchase. And the reason for that is I just picked up this pistol right here. This is a Glock 17 Gen 3 and again, police trade-in, and, and I needed a new pistol because I've had a number of people asking me to take them to the range. And while I do have a Glock 19, I think it's right there, um, that I could use them, it's kind of a Ferrari, and I need, uh, I need like a, a, a Prius <laughs> to use to train them on a pistol. Now, I'm not a trainer. I'm not pretending to be a trainer. I'm just trying to introduce people to firearms, how to... Uh, handle them safely, uh, understand which is the bad end and which end to keep downrange and keep your booger hook off the bang switch and all that jazz. So, um, so that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to go ahead and pick up an inexpensive pistol. And that's probably the number one reason why you might want to pick up a police trade-in is the cost. The cost on these are going to be anywhere between $100 to $200 cheaper than what a brand new uh, version of this pistol might cost. I picked this up for $3.99 and I was uh, really, really pleased with it when it came in. It's got some things that need to be handled and we'll talk about that here in just a second, but the number one reason why I jumped on one of these was because of the cost and the need that I had for a new pistol. The next thing that uh, you guys may be relatively surprised on is the condition that the pistol is going to come in. And you might think, oh, well, you know, it's a police trade-in, so it's probably been beat up, it's probably been shot a lot, and so on and so forth, but realistically, um, that's not really the case, especially with this pistol. As soon as it came in to my FFL, which is Jim from Flying Monkey Gunworks, I had him go ahead and break everything down and take a deep dive into this pistol to make sure that A, it's functioning, or at least it should be functioning well, and then what is the condition of the internals on this particular pistol. His assessment, being a Glock armor and that I trust his uh, opinions, is that uh, there was only about 200 rounds put through this pistol, and that's, relatively surprising to me. I knew it was going to be a low round count, but I didn't think it was going to be that low. And in addition to that, 200 rounds is still within the quote unquote break-in period for a Glock. Now, I'm not here to argue whether or not that's a true thing or not, but from my experience, most of my Glocks, the Glock 19, this particular pistol, and then a Glock 26 that I used to have, um, after about the 500 round mark is when it really started to perform very well. And that's what I found with this pistol. I did have some uh, stovepipes and some failure to feeds, but for the most part, it ran very, very well once I got another couple hundred rounds through it. The final thing with this is that you're probably going to end up with some upgrades with this pistol. Uh, some good upgrades, maybe some bad upgrades. We'll get into the bad upgrades here in just a second. <laughs> <laughs> with the good upgrades, this came with uh, steel tritium filled night sights right out of the box. And that was something I was really, really happy with. If you're not familiar, Glocks have kind of crappy sights. They're kind of notorious for them. They're polymer, so you know they're all plastic and they can get dinged up fairly easily. Um, the, the rear notch has this square U that's just really confusing to the eye. Uh, so most people will automatically upgrade the Glock sights to a steel or a better version of the sights. And this came with 
tritium field night sights. And that was something I really, really did like. I was like, oh, great. That's one less thing I have to worry about. So there's that. Those are the biggest reasons why you might want to purchase a police or an LEO trade-in. And that's kind of the reasons why I jumped on one of these to begin with as well. But with the good, there's always the downside too. There's always an opposite side of the coin and there are some opposite sides of the coin with this. When we talk about upgrades, I said the night sights were upgrades, but when I took it into a dark room, I found that the front night sight was dead. The tritium in it had already exceeded its half-life and uh, there was no illumination whatsoever. The rear sights uh, are dim. They're still glowing, but they're dim. So that would tell me that this pistol has been around for at least 10 years. And that kind of leads me into the next issue is if this pistol has been around for that long, what's really going on with the internals? Now, for me, I've already had my gunsmith take a look at it. He gave me the thumbs up. Everything was good to go. Took it to the range. It, it had a couple hip cups, but after I was able to kind of work it through, no issues whatsoever. And so a lot of you uh, could take, you know, you know, peace of mind into knowing that you have the ability to do that. But if you don't have that ability, then what should you do? Well, one of the things that I would recommend is if you do pick up a LEO trade-in, uh, then I would recommend going ahead and switching out all the springs inside the pistol itself. And you can do that fairly easily. There's a lot of YouTube videos that will show you how to do that. And if you guys are interested in a spring set for like a Glock, uh, I've got a link to fitandfire.com down below, and that will help you guys uh, get you kind of channeled into the right website to pick up a uh, spring kit for one of these pistols. So those are two things that you need to really consider about uh, these pistols right off the bat, you know. Check the sights. If they are upgraded, they're night sights. Take them into a dark room. See if they're glowing. If they're not glowing, then that could be a telltale sign that the internals may, may come with some issues. Now, I talked about the good upgrades, and I said there might be a few bad upgrades, and there are a couple bad upgrades with this. The first and foremost is that there is a spring that was added into this um, pistol. It's called the NY1, and what that essentially does is it increases the poundage on the trigger. A lot of precincts do that to kind of help give pause to their officers before they decide to pull the trigger with that extra weight. It gives them just that fraction of a second to process what's going on to make sure they should be pulling the trigger and lighting off a couple of rounds regardless of what situation they're in. I'm not here to argue the politics behind that. I'm just telling you that uh, a lot of precincts will add different types of spring sets in here to increase the poundage of the trigger. With that being said, that could be an additional expense for you to uh, pay a gunsmith to bring it back to stock, right? And that's what I did with this pistol. I had my FFL, uh, Jim, uh, I had him go ahead and replace that spring and give me a stock spring to bring that poundage from about nine pounds back down to five and a half, six. So it's now in its stock configuration as far as the internals go. The other uh, thing I'll say is their armor, go ahead and cut out a spot right here in the frame. Um, this, that's just something with this pistol, not to say that all pistols, uh, all LEO trade-ins are gonna be the same, but they did cut out a notch right here like the Gen 5 uh, Glocks were. I, I don't really care because with this being a full-size pistol, that notch is really not going to bother me whatsoever. But if this was like a Glock 19, I would have an issue with that uh, with that notch being cut out. Again, that is specific to this pistol, not indicative of all police trade-ins, so just keep that in mind that you may have additional <laughs> um, 
gunsmithing work done to your pistol. So make sure that you do get a gunsmith to take a deep dive into the pistol and make sure that it's uh, good to go. Wear on this is not bad at all. There's really no uh, holster wear on the slide. There are a few minor nicks in the frame or in the pistol grip right here, but realistically at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. It is a used pistol, so you should expect some of those things from the get-go. But that's really a quick overview of the LEO Police trade-in that I purchased. And I want to hear what you guys have to say. Sound off in the comment section down below. What has been your experience? Would you agree with some of the things that I said? Or are there other things that I should have brought up as well? I would love to hear what you guys have to say. And with that being said, that's really all I got this time. I'm happy with it. At the end of the day, it is what it is. It's a, it's a tool, so I'm not concerned about the aesthetics. Uh, I was more concerned about the internals. They're good to go. Yeah, they had a few hiccups, but it's good to go. I really do appreciate you guys swinging by. Shout out to my Patreon members. Thank you so much for all of your support. If you guys are interested, again, there's links down below to support the channel. And I would appreciate you guys considering that. All right, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Take care, guys. Bye.